aren't you going to turn your coffee mug around so that everybody can see Mr. Chris's coffee gallery? I can't because I'm a righty. <laughs> Nobody ever says I can't do something because I'm a righty. It's always us lefties that are like, we can't use this because I'm a lefty. Well, we can fix this. You can come on this side. Then I can grab my cup like this oh. and we can work it because like I could, I don't mind. That's, you're still going to be using your left but, hand. But then I can use my left hand, but see my left hand is next to you right now. So, but if we switch sides, we would really mess with everybody's heads because they're used to us being on a certain side when we sit down. That is true. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 106. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. And we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch, where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Big week. Super big week and a big weekend coming. Yes. Well, first of all, if you're watching right now, when this video goes live at 10 a.m. Eastern time, right over here somewhere, if you're watching on a computer or down below, there's a chat going on and that is us chatting live when we actually release this video. We are not filming this live. We are simply chatting live. Yeah. And we do that every single Monday when we release Kid on the Chat Couch. It's called The Premiere. So come join us at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Mondays in the live chat. I love it because it is the multitasking that I would want to do if I was Hermione Granger in Harry <laughs> Potter. I can both be talking to people and be talking to people this way. I love it. The cool part is, is right now while we're talking to them, we're sitting on a beach in the Florida Keys. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's not raining. <laughs> hopefully we're not getting stung by a jellyfish, but instead we're we're doing a little bit of relaxing in the sunshine. Yeah, so we are actually, today is currently Saturday when we're filming this. We're headed down to the Florida Keys tomorrow for three days of relaxing in the RV. We're going down to a beautiful state park, which is very difficult to get into, but it came up and we're like, we're dropping everything because like literally like when a reservation comes up for the Florida State Parks in the Keys, because it's only like $35 a night to stay there, yeah, they disappear within seconds. Like you get the alert and it's like, there's a spot up. Oh. No, it's gone. It's not that we are celebrities on a VIP list. It's not that kind of ex exclusivity. Right. But it's more just a case of... Everybody they, wants to go there. They've, they've only got a few available spots. And trying to find a place to stay in the Keys for under $100 a night yeah. is a little bit Most challenging. Most of the RV places are like $150 to $200 a night to bring... And that's, again, you're bringing your own room. Right. Right. <laughs> So I just need some here, water and electricity. Thirty-five dollars a night. The only thing you don't Maybe get a place is to sewer. Put our, yeah, a place to put my poop. Yeah, that'd be good. And it's great because um, the place we're going to is right on the water. The other one is on the water, and then there's another one, John Pennekamp State Park, which is up in Key Largo, and we're headed there in May to kind of invade in on Katie's. Uh, anniversary, but I also realize it's our anniversary as well. I know. I'm I'm really actually super excited about the <laughs> fact that like we both realize we're on our anniversary. Like how bad is it that like <laughs> we totally forgot what day it was? But yeah, I'm excited about that. John Pennekamp State Park was always the end of the year field trip mm -hmm. when you were in elementary school here in never South Florida. Been there. I've never been there. I don't think my mom trusted me on an overnight trip as like an elementary school child. Maybe. What elementary school child is taking an overnight trip? A lot of them. I mean, we were talking about the 80s, yo. We like, we were outside playing until the, the not, lights came on. Not uh, Yeah, of course we did too. But I mean, Super I think our first overnight field trip was the eighth grade field trip to Washington, D.C. Yeah. That was, that was the first like overnight field trip. What was your special field trip where you were at when you were in elementary school? That's what I want to know. What was the field trip? The field trip I was allowed to go on was to the dump. <laughs> we did a tour of the dump. And actually on the top of the dump, there is a volleyball court and picnic tables. Yes. I don't know who is doing that. Who is utilizing that? 
our local dump, the one that you can actually see from our house. Yeah. There what is, is you? There is actually a model airplane runway on the dump because they don't dump garbage, garbage there anymore now. Uh, so they've like cultivated, they put like, I think landscape debris and that kind of stuff up there. Yeah. But yeah, so there's a whole side of it where it is maintained and they have a model airplane runway place. They have a beautiful like lake around that area too, mm -hmm. but I'm not fishing in that. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you're going to get one of those Simpsons three eyed fish out of that. But I am going to go fishing this weekend, hopefully. Yeah. We've sort of set the bar that we're going to try to eat what I catch. We may go hungry. We may go hungry. We can intermittent fast for very long amounts of time, so that's good. <laughs> well, I need to go get my fishing license after we're done with this. But we had a busy week, so we had obviously St. Patrick's Day. It was so nice. It was good food. I watched The Quiet Man. You watched The Quiet Man. And then we had our live stream. And if you joined us for our live stream, we're very sorry. Yeah. Um, so we we definitely had some technical difficulties. Still wow. struggling to figure out what's going on. What happened? But then we did find out with, uh, we have this switcher that allows everything to work together. And when I was working on it this morning to set up for this recording, somehow it changed things around. So that's why we were getting that black screen all the time. But I don't know what happened with all of the buffering, but we have a new switcher coming. So hopefully that is going to be fixed for this week. Yeah. Because we now have two live streams for the next six weeks. We have two live streams every week. And two type A personalities. <laughs> that want to be like controlling over things like i want to do whatever prep work i can do to be successful mm -hmm. if i've committed to something i want right. to bring my best so when equipment that you really have very limited control over or internet which is out of your right. realm of influence like i can't fix xfinity lord right. knows i would love to try but when when something like that goes wrong our personalities don't know what to do with that so the future plan is to have a separate setup right over here on the other side. So using our main camera. I just poured some coffee in my lap. And what we're going to do is I have my camping hotspot. Yeah. And so what I'm going to start doing is keep this up and running over here on the side. And if something happens with the internet, we'll basically be able to quickly backup? jump over to a backup internet. So I'm paying for that. So we might as well just have it just in case Use it. so hopefully we don't have those kind of issues but we appreciate everybody who stuck with us for that it was but so encouraging back to the live stream so here's what we're going to be doing we're going to actually have two live streams yep. every week for the next six weeks so we're going to have our normal thursday live stream which is at 8 30 p.m eastern time mm -hmm. but now we're also going to be adding in a 6 p.m eastern time live stream on wednesdays for the next six weeks with guest Bronson Dan. How exciting is this? Yes. He's so knowledgeable. And also I love that like we're actually close in age, mm -hmm. which is like- He's my age. Yeah, so we're not, you know, having somebody that is, you know, training us that we can't identify with. Sometimes it's challenging to, to say like, well, you're 18 years old. Of course right. you're like got the energy and the ability to like work out like and, and see results right but what about somebody that is in their late 40s or 50s or 60s yeah so bronson is actually going to be coming on to kind of walk us through our april no joke challenge now the no joke challenge is all about gaining lean muscle it is not going to be about losing fat but the good news is if you gain muscle you will lose fat now and in the future and it's, but it's really gonna be about gaining that lean muscle to help our body composition, to help us increase our metabolism. But it's really cool because here's the thing, you may gain five pounds of muscle and not lose any fat, which you won't, but if you don't lose any fat, your body fat percentage actually changes. So you could go from like a 30% body fat to a 27% body fat without losing a pound of body fat. Isn't that cool? It's kind of amazing. And I'm actually really enjoying focusing on gaining muscle and stop my mind from always fixating on losing weight. Mm -hmm. We're always thinking about losing weight, but what can we be gaining? Let's focus, we've talked about focusing on gaining health, right? Right. What about gaining muscle? Yeah, so the whole month of April, we're gonna be doing the No Joke Challenge. Bronson will be on every Wednesday night to coach us through it and all of his services are gonna be completely free. We're also gonna have some giveaway prizes at the end of the month. 
Um, so we're talking to a couple of different sponsors that will help us along with that. I'm not quite sure what they are, but I know they're going to be really cool. Yep. We were kind of egging on with Keto Savage. We did a podcast with him yesterday and trying to get some Keto Bricks in there as well. Why not? But I had to mention something because maybe somebody didn't see our live stream on Thursday because it was kind of a bit of a mess. <laughs> but we did get this. We did. If you didn't see this, and we're not gonna we're not gonna go on this too long, but this. This here is the May, not the April, May. the May Chow Club box. And uh, Rachel doesn't really know everything that's in here. She knows one thing. I know the most important thing. I know what's in here. I'm not allowed to tell you what's in here, but I'm going to tell you this. You want the May box. You definitely you want it. If you like Keto Chow, okay? Yeah. And don't, get, don't get this. Well, you may want to get this. Don't put yourself in a financial strain. Yeah. That's never our desire. No, but... If you here's the thing, the Chow Club box every month you get a secret surprise. The May secret surprise is the greatest is one amazing. Ever. It is the best one they've had. I'm not allowed to tell you what it is, but you're going to be very disappointed if you don't get the May box. I yeah. promise you will be very disappointed if you don't, don't get the May box. You will only have until April 15th at midnight to order it. Otherwise. You're not going to be able to get it. And I don't know when yeah, you're going to be able to get what the secret thing. surprise is, yeah. if you will be able to get it without getting it in the box. I don't know if they're even doing that. I just know that it's really cool. And Chris, like, had to share it with me. I'm so glad he, he may did. have gotten in trouble with Miriam for sharing it with me. Probably, but, like, go easy on him, Miriam, because we're so stinking excited. <laughs> so, yeah, we had that. Uh, we had our live streams coming up. We're really excited about that. Now, along with the April challenge, just to kind of prepare yourself, Rachel's coming out with a calendar. And for each month, each day of the month of right. April, we're going to add you another challenge. You know, every month we have a challenge. We post it on our Facebook. We post it on Instagram. And we post it on our website with a daily motivation. Well, the April challenge, ready for this? The secret food of the day. Yeah, we're going to play a little bit of Chopped. Okay. So every day, and I want to, I'm going to go ahead and tell you everything before we get into that month so that you know, like what, you know, food items to put on your grocery list right. if you're interested. Now we're picking a different protein. There's a different protein every day. And if you accept the challenge, you're trying to find a way to utilize that protein in a recipe. Okay. And we really want to get excited about all of the different variety of protein sources there are, because mm -hmm. there's a lot, and you don't have to get bored with them, right? Right? You you can. It's something to be excited about, and they don't have to cost a fortune. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is each day we're gonna have the whole calendar, so you can see the whole month ahead of time, and then each day we'll put on our website and on Facebook. Here's the protein of the day. Here's the food of the day, and then. What you can do if you want to participate, you go onto our website or onto our Facebook group and you post a picture of whatever you make with it. It's kind of fun because like, let's say it's a day is pork chops. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be sweet if like everybody in the Two Crazy Ketos family, we're all having pork chops. It feels like you were having a family dinner. <laughs> we're all eating the same thing. It's kind of neat. So let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with the comments. What's in your coffee this morning? That's what I want to know. I got a little bit of almond milk mm -hmm. and two squirts of, I don't know what kind of skinny syrup. Well, I've got probably two squirts of some kind of whatever this skinny syrup is that you used and black coffee. Well, you're chatting right now. I'm going to go out on the uh, paddle boards. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Leaving me behind. Okay. So if you're new to our channel, Keto on the Couch is all about our subscribers. We like to celebrate our subscribers. We like to talk about wins. We like to answer questions, uh, look at the different comments from our Facebook family group. And every week we like to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And this is somebody who put up a post on our Facebook family group, which if you're not a member of, why not? Yes. Uh, go ahead and join it. There's a link down below. It's completely free. And this person put up a post which we find super inspirational. And this week's is from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Very simple. She said six weeks and six pounds. The scale means nothing. That is awesome. And this is why. Whoa. 
Look at her face. Look at her hips. Look at the contours. Completely changed. So a lot of people are going to look at that and be like, six pounds, that's nothing. And you went through that, right? Six pounds means nothing. This is why the scale is is the devil. Yes. Don't worry about the scale. We're worried about other things because, yeah, six pounds, and that is a huge difference in size and shape and her face contour. You look gorgeous. Amazing. So thank you for putting that up because sometimes, you know. We forget. We forget. And sometimes people want to hear it from somebody else, right? Yeah. It's like, you can't tell you how many times, like, I would say something to the kids or even a Rachel, right. like, you got to do this. You got to do this. No, that won't work. You got to do this. No, that won't work. And then somebody else comes along and be like, hey, dad, did you know? And I'm like, no, I've only been telling you that for 20 years. Well, and it's the same thing with encouragement, right? Right. So like, you'll say something to the kids, like, you look really nice today. And they're like, you have to say that. You're my mom. And then somebody, you know, at church or at school would say like, oh, I really like that shirt. You look nice today. And they're like, I look nice today. And I'm like, I told you this morning you did. (laughs) Okay, next up, we have our subscriber of the week. And again, we always ask you guys, please go into our Facebook family group. If you don't have Facebook, I know a lot of people don't, Mm -hmm. you can send us an email at stories at twocrazyketos.com and send us your story, a couple of pictures. It doesn't have to be something like you're at the end of your journey. No. It could be a success of something that you've experienced for the first time in 20 years. Like, hey, I haven't eaten sugar for the first time in a week. You know, that that is an accomplishment. And we ask you to share your stories because there is somebody out there right now who is struggling with the same thing and they think they're alone. And right. when you share your story, they're gonna read it and be like, oh, I'm not alone, it's not just somebody me. else gets me, and yeah. it's going to inspire them to do more. It really will. So this week's subscriber of the week is Suzanne. Hey Suzanne, she says five years difference, down about 70 pounds, not all keto lifestyle only the last year, another 20 pounds and muscle building. I love the better me. There you go. Wow. Oh my gracious. That looks amazing. Look at that, you look fantastic. I mean, and here's the thing. I love it. Here's the thing. And, and, you know, somebody's going to say something not keto, but it doesn't matter that it wasn't all keto. We're celebrating our successes, our achievements, our accomplishments. That's right. And you know what? She's living a keto lifestyle now. It's a struggle. I mean, you didn't lose all of your initial weight on keto. You had lost a bunch of weight, then you gained about 50 of it back 70. and then lost that on keto, right? <laughs> yeah. But there's 30 or 40 pounds on you that you didn't, or that was on you, that you didn't lose on keto. That's very true. So yeah, we're not going to be like Voldemort. Right. And be like, if you this isn't- You can only tell us what you lost on keto. If this isn't, you know, pure and, you know, there's some muggles in here, then like we're out. No, we don't believe that. So what? Whatever it is that got you started and then you you change it. We know a lot of people that, that went paleo first and mm-hmm. then went to keto or some people were vegetarians or vegans and then went to keto. So yeah, it's a very it's a very different mindset, but the goal is the same, which is to get healthier. Yeah. Now, again, please make sure you're sharing your stories on our Facebook family group. They don't even have to be like how much weight you lost. They could be non-scale victories. You're in a new size, you know, anything like that that's going to help inspire people. But here's the thing is it doesn't just inspire other people. It doesn't just inspire us to keep doing what we're doing, but it's going to inspire you because a lot of times when you write something down, you can look at that and be like, wow, like how many times I've looked at myself and been like, you know, I don't think I've accomplished that much. But then when I look down at a picture that I may put up or I look down and I start writing down, I've lost a hundred pounds. When you say it, you're like, I've lost a hundred pounds. That doesn't mean much. But when you write it down and actually see those words, I lost a hundred pounds, it affects you in your mind in a positive manner. It really does. In fact, you know, now that the, you know, we're well into the year, you can go and get a planner that's very inexpensive at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say, don't even put your schedule in it. Use that planner to every single day, write down something that that was a win in your life. Maybe you write down, "I, I ate my meal prep. Maybe one day is, I went for a walk today. You know, I stopped what I was doing and in that time where I'm usually snacking, I I watched a movie or I took a shower instead. And instead of eating something, I had an experience. Like whatever it is, take the time to write that down and you'll be happy that you did because you can look back over each month and say like, 
like, wow, I had a lot of wins Mm -hmm. and not just focus on what I haven't accomplished yet. Yeah. Well, let's get into the comments from last week's Keto on the Couch, and then we can also read some Facebook comments. So the first one is going to be from SMCLA. Says, as always, thank you for great content. Joe, with all of your free time, I would love you to start a YouTube channel where you go down the rabbit hole of your latest tech obsessions, like video streaming, drones, 3D printers, et cetera. If I started another YouTube channel, she would divorce me. Well, I but I see (laughs) the um the outlet for it. I enjoy and the kids enjoy seeing what you get into mm-hmm. because you you do have a very it's usually in trouble it's funny because i enjoy creativity but it's usually on like the writing side you know painting something and what you really enjoy is creativity within technology yes and it's always really interesting did you make like soapbox soapbox racers and like robots and things when you were a little kid? Um, I did. I mean, I was, well, obviously I was a Boy Scout. So yeah. we were big into like the the soapbox derbies and we would get yeah. the little wooden things. And I was way into whittling and that kind of stuff. Wow. So, you know, I enjoyed all of those type, types of things. But I think, hey, it is hard to manage two YouTube. It's hard to manage one YouTube channel. I mean, we were talking to Keto Savage on a podcast that should be coming up soon. So we'll let you know when it actually comes yeah. out. But that's something we were talking about. It. I love doing this and this is just a part-time thing for us you know having our youtube channel and it is definitely the most i don't know about for you this is the most rewarding thing i've ever done truly i mean when when you read people's success stories and people send you messages and say like you've inspired me to lose weight you've inspired me to get outside you've inspired me to spend more time with my children or my grandchildren that means so much to us and it motivates us to keep doing this But as rewarding as this is, this is the most difficult full-time job that I've ever had. And then when you tack on that, it's really not even really a part-time job. Yeah, it it is challenging, but it's it's such a blessing. Like Mm -hmm. I always feel like every single morning I wake up and I'm like, Please, Lord, let me have the opportunity to encourage somebody. Yes. And one of the other, like, greatest wins that we enjoy the best is when I see people make friendships. Yes. Like, so they they came into this and they have a shared experience and maybe they got in the Facebook family group where they met each other on Discord. And then you see them developing that friendship outside of you know, just keto. Mm -hmm. And I just, that, that excites me so much because we need friendships. We need community. I mean, I I love seeing like some of the friendships that have blossomed and I'm excited that we're gonna be able to meet some people at Autumn's event in September. But that reminds me that uh, just so you guys can start tally putting it on your schedule. We did mention it during our live stream and we'll keep mentioning it as things kind of get hammered down more, but we will be making a trek to New York to visit my mom. Terry, if you're watching, you're not allowed to tell her. Don't tell her. Um, So the plan right now is to be leaving Florida on April 23rd, right? right? That is correct. We're going to make a stopover in South Carolina somewhere. Once we know exactly where, we're going to let everybody know. But it's going to be like um, probably like closer to the Georgia, South Carolina. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the South Carolina to North Carolina border. Somewhere right. in there. You know, south of the border, maybe a little bit south of south of the border. Is that... <laughs> South, South. So that'll be the first stop. So we'd probably be stopping there sometime in the evening on the 23rd. And then we're going to make another stop in like the Pennsylvania area on Saturday, the 24th. We're going to do a quick get together so that we can then get up to New York. And then we may do another stop on the way back. So if you're in those areas, um, kind of notate down those dates that, hey, I want to go and head and meet two crazy ketos. We're excited about it. I would love that. We're also planning uh, some type of a meetup. We're just waiting to see what happens as things open up more. Um, in August, like in the central to eastern side of Florida, like up in like the St. Augustine type area at a state park where we're going to go up with our RV. We're going to say anybody who wants to come, even if you're not RVing, if you just want to come in for the day, we're going to have like a giant barbecue or something someplace. We just have to find a place where we can have enough people be able to come in 
and we're gonna try to coordinate some kind of a get together there because hey, there's no conferences going on right we now. We still need people, and though. we want to meet some people. That's right. So uh, let's get into the next comment, and this one is from Pulani. Hey, Pulani. She says we trade sides on the bed too. Hubby always has to be between the exterior door and me. Sometimes our friends think we're crazy, as it seems like most pick a side and then that's it. The other thing we do, if there are four of us in a vehicle, we never sit directly behind each other. Always opposite sides in case we were ever in an accident, especially when our kids were younger. That is amazing. I never even thought about that. I never that. thought of that. I did have friends who, um, when their kids were younger, yeah. they would never like fly on the same plane. I know that, knew that too. All right, so I had friends who did that. And it's funny, I thought I was the only one who slept closest to the door to protect you. And it turns out there's several people who do that. There's a lot of sweet husbands <laughs> out there and wives out there. Uh, next one on the same topic was from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. She said, I sleep on the side where I can lay on my right side facing the edge of the bed. At the hotel, I'm with Rachel, closest to the air. I like the fist bump. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am always hot. So I love, you know, being cool. It's good for me to do my exercises first thing in the morning, the coolest part of the day. It's hard for me because um, I have a bad left shoulder, but I sleep on the left side because I want to be closest to the door. And Rachel also needs to be closest to the bathroom. True. Although I feel like at my age, I should be closest to the bathroom. No, you're getting, you're you're renewing your youth, sir. Okay. But the problem is, is like I do, I like to sleep on my side. And so this is my bad shoulder. So I'm always kind of like squirming and stuff like that. But I'm curious, what side of the bed, when you sleep, not what side of the bed, but do you sleep like stomach down? Uh -huh. Do you feet sleep on your back or do you sleep on your side? You sleep on your back. I used to, like my mom would put a mirror under my nose because I did not move. I move more now. I, I definitely mm -hmm. move more since I've had Caleb. Okay. I don't know if that just happened in pregnancy and you just got used to never being able to like be comfortable. Right. Um, when, you, when you're pregnant. But I used to sleep like the dead. I mean, absolute vampire. Just never moved the entire night. Really? Yeah. I've never experienced that, Rachel. Well, because I had Caleb after, like, I met you after I had Caleb. <laughs> Next one is from Oval. Hey, Oval. My husband and I used to minister in Middletown, New York. Also, in 2004, he had a hiking accident at Catterskill Falls near Hunter mm -hmm. and was in rehab hospital for four months in Lake Katrine. If you were heading anywhere near those places, you could come up 81 to 78 East, head up through the Pocono Mountains and up 84 to New York State Thruway or back other back roads. That way you'll pass through the Allentown area. Just a suggestion. Thank you. So Oval, send me an email at Joe at Two Crazy Ketos because that sounds like a plan. I know yes. Middletown very well. Um, so because I grew up, uh, up in that area. Well, I didn't grow up there. I grew up on Long Island, but we always went up to the Catskills um, every weekend, we had some property up there, which is where my mom has moved to. And uh, I know Middletown, we're going very close to Middletown. We're going up to the Monticello area. And I know like the Pocono area pretty well. Growing up, um, I always went skiing at Vernon Valley Great Gorge. Look at you. Uh, driving right through. It's funny because as a young kid, like you would see, that was in the town of Florida and Goshen. And you would think, Florida. Going to no, Goshen. No, it was Florida, New York. There was also a funny, so Vernon Valley Great Gorge was also a very popular theme park during the summer. Isn't that the dangerous one? Yeah. <laughs> the one where like people were hitting their heads? Yeah, there was a really cool video about Action Park and Action how park. deadly that place was. Did you go to Action Park? I did. You know. <laughs> did you hurt yourself? I did not hurt myself, but I do remember I I didn't go there like I went there like one or two times. We mostly went skiing. And that was during the winter and it was fun. It was safe during the winter. It just wasn't safe during the summer because it was like nobody <laughs> controlled anything. <laughs> Wow. Let us know down in the comment section if you've seen that movie on the death trap known as Action Park. Now, I always associated the Poconos with hotel rooms, like with beds shaped, shaped like, like a, a heart. heart. Yes. And then like a champagne glass. Yep. Uh, they I had was, all those commercials. Did they have those commercials down here in Florida? They did. In okay. fact, that was always where like all of us like, you know, 
young Florida girls were dreaming about taking our honeymoon because that just seemed like, you know, a love boat cruise. That was like the coolest place ever. But I've never been there. Have you ever been? I've been to the Poconos. To the Poconos. Yes. Did you ever go in like a champagne? No, I did not go in a champagne. I always wanted or... to go that. But then I thought, well, what if my foot got stuck in the stem and I drowned? Well, we could <laughs> just drive up but instead of staying in the RV, stay in like Let's one of the Let's stay in one places. of those. I want one of those like shaken beds and stuff. Let's <laughs> oh, do well, that. Oh, well, make sure you send me the email at Joe at Two Crazy Ketos because... We definitely are trying to stay like on track because this is a long drive and I want to have as much time with my mom as possible. So we would like to be there for like three or four days because, you know, we can only take X amount of time. I want to get to the point where I could take six months to do this. But right now, nine days yeah. is kind of pushing it it's with landscaping and everything. So uh, if we can stay kind of on track and if Allentown is like without taking me an hour, like I'd love to do the Lancaster or Intercourse area, but I think that may take us a little bit too far off of the course going to New York. So uh, next one is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher. He says, I don't even know when St. Patrick's Day is, but I have a lot of brisket and some corned beef that I'm going to be making. It has nothing to do with a particular day, <laughs> though. I bought corned beef on sale in February, and I just now found brisket for $1.99 wow. a pound. So I know what I'm going to be eating for the next week or so as soon as I get a chance to fix it. I think I may make pastrami with my corned beef. I love pastrami. I like corned beef more, but I do really like pastrami. But the problem was this year, the corned beef was so expensive. I mean, even at Aldi, $4 a pound, that is a lot of money for corned beef. And especially when you're used to, like he's saying, $1.99 for brisket. I can That's go to Sam's good. Club and get brisket for like $2.79 a pound. Yeah. That's the whole thing. So I do need to, when we go out later on today, See look for discount. some corned beef because I love my corned beef. It should beef. start going on sale. Okay, next one is from Jessica. Hey, Jessica. She says, many moons ago, I worked for a cereal company. During one of the company updates, they said that the cereal companies really struggle when the economy is good. That's interesting. What, because people can have money to buy anything else but the cereal, maybe? <laughs> but here's the, you know what the problem is? is I guess that, yeah, I guess that they can say that the cereal is the cheaper option, like you can, but you can't really get nutrition, but that's their whole thing is, right? They pump you full of, you're getting a complete balanced breakfast when you eat Kix, right? But really, it's part of a complete balanced breakfast. Yes, we were that was always, an interesting video part, right? Because we're not hearing that whole thing. We would hear like, oh, that's a balanced breakfast. No, it's supposed to be part of a right. balanced breakfast. <laughs> But I guess that they're, they're saying that this is cheaper than when, you know, when the economy is really good, you can afford to eat healthier things or eat more food. But here's the problem. Eggs and bacon are, is pretty Cereal cheap. Cereal is not cheap anymore. Yeah. If you aren't like into going to get whatever is the buy one, get one free for the week or whatever is like got a lot of coupons. If you're just walking in and buying what's on the shelf and you're brand loyal... I see cereal. People talk about keto cereal being seven to ten dollars a box. I walk into Publix and see cereal at five dollars a box. It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, it's really expensive, but it's interesting that it the sales go down when the economy is better. Okay, next one is from Shannon. Hey, Shannon. She said, Shannon, I'm like you, Joe. When I am into something, I am all He's in. All in. I need to get all of the stuff to go with it. Please tell me more about your slam ball. I'm interested, but not sure how heavy I should buy. So, yeah, it is funny. I have always been that way. And I'm not just that way with me. I'm that way when I buy gifts. Like, I remember when the boys were little. Uh, I remember John Paul was small, and this thing came out. It was called the Rockenbach. And what this was, was, first of all, he was, like, five. And way I, too young for I, this. I think it was made for, like, seven or older, because I was one, always one of those people that was like, hey, I'm going to give my kids something that's, like, for a little bit younger. Like, they can't choke on it, so I'm not worried about it. But I'm going to make them, like, be older than they are. Bad idea. Aww. right? I, I, let my, I made my kids grow up too fast. Yeah. But... So I bought him this thing and it was like these motorized cars and it was almost like a combination of motorized robots and Legos. And you would build this thing and then it had these little balls and you would have these vehicles would go around, balls. suck them out, <laughs> suck them up, and then they would dump them and they would move through tractors and everything oh. else. I had to buy him every single vehicle, every single piece. Like at one point, the room was just nothing but a giant rock and box set. Clothes for Rachel. If I find a shirt that I like, she's getting that shirt every in color. every color possible. That is just this. That's something about me that I have to have every accessory that goes with it. And I'm doing that right now with the 3D printer. I've done it with my drones. I do it with my computers. I need to have it all. Slam ball, by the way. Um, I think we have a 
12 pound slam ball. It was, they're hard to find right now. I'm gonna tell you, if you need to find any kind of workout equipment. Try offer up first. You don't need a lot to do this April challenge with Bronson. If you can get yourself uh, some dumbbells, just a couple of dumbbells, that'd be great. If you can't, there's other ways around that. The thing that you're gonna really would like to get, and you can get these pretty much anywhere and they're inexpensive, is a foam roller because there's some exercises with foam rollers. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you can kind of improvise, but I like the slam ball and you basically just pick it up and you slam it on the ground. It takes and some aggression out. It does take up some aggression, but you're utilizing a lot of muscles because you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna, so I slam it as hard as I can. So you're working your shoulders, you're working your arms. Then you gotta bend down. And when I bend down and pick it up, I like do a squat. So now you're like, you're getting all of these different exercises in. So you don't need a really heavy one because you wanna be able to slam it down. So again, I'm no fitness expert, clearly. <laughs> you know what? But I, I like the 12 pound one. As you're talking about that, I'm thinking about Gallagher. Remember that like comedian guy? Yes, Watermelon, I saw him. And I was just thinking that maybe like, yeah, his slam ball would just be like a whole big container of uh, watermelons. Did you ever see Gallagher live? No. Did you guys, did anybody ever see Gallagher live? Was he like, good? Oh yeah. Did you sit in the front row and get we like We were like the sprayed? third row. We were like the third row. So yeah, we had to wear the ponchos because you were getting the fruit all over you and everything else. I would not want to be the janitorial staff yeah, at any imagine? convention center that had to clean after He that. must have had to pay a lot of extra money to go into different places, right? You'd have to pay me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you do need any kind of workout equipment, it is very hard to find stuff right now. I mean, we sold our bicycles like to replace, to get the electric bicycles. We sold our bicycles on offer up for like, I actually got more money from mine than I paid for it. And yours, I got even like seven months later, like what I paid for it. It's very difficult to find stuff. So go on offer up and you can usually find people selling weights uh, if you're looking for any kind of weights, like dumbbells, kettlebells, anything like that, you're looking at about $1.50 to $2 a pound. That that should be a good price. Any more than that, they're ripping you off. And that's kind of like our policy. Sometimes people send us messages like, how are you getting all of these different things? Like we all sell this stuff. anything we don't use. Yeah, so we, in order to get something different, you've got to sell something. So you have to, you know, make the money and then be able to pay it like in full. Like our paddle boards. Like I, we bought pa inflatable paddle boards to make it easier for us to kind of go around. But now we're selling our, our kayak, kayak because we love the kayak, but it's big, it's heavy. I have to put the rack on my car every time we use it. So sometimes we're like, yeah, not worth the trouble this time. The inflatable things fit in a backpack. We can bring it with us. And I think we're going to get onto the water even more. Because like I'm planning on bringing them to New York because my mom's near a lake. So we yeah. can go paddle boarding up in New York. And wow, for the first time ever, you won't have to worry about alligators. That will be strange. That'll be really weird, huh? Snakes, uh, though. No, we really, they don't really have poisonous water snakes. There's no water moccasins up there. You have rattlesnakes. That's pretty much the biggest thing you have to worry about, but they're not water snakes. Okay. So, uh, next one is from Lilybug. Hey, Lilybug. She said, I was squeezing into stretchy size 20 jeans and women's 3X shirts in a plus department. In the summer, it was size 22 shorts. When we had our house fire two weeks ago, oh. we had to go buy clothes to wear since everything was smoke damaged and needed cleaning. I bought size 20 jeans, not stretchy, and two X tops and looking awesome. I even managed to feel good wearing a woman's cut 2XT, two two not plus size. Well, first of all, Laylee Bug, I am so sorry about your house fire. That like That's really that bad. breaks my heart. So like we're we'll be praying for you as you recover from that. But wow, what a you know silver lining yeah. afterwards that you went ahead and, and bought new clothes and can enjoy new sizes. That is incredible. There You're is something great. about going from stretchy to not stretchy, right? You're like, hey, I mean, I remember basketball shorts, right? Basketball shorts because they're stretchy. Yeah. And you can fit a lot into it because you can wear an extra large or a large basketball short, but be a triple X size like me. That's That was me. We but always, when you get into those other ones, it's a different story. It is. I mean, we always, like my mom will always qualify when she talks about like going down a size or getting something. And like, these are real jeans. <laughs> Because there's a difference between like the stretchy jeans and like real jeans. Like these are denim that you can't negotiate with as hard as you can some of the jeggings. Yeah. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with some more comments. Well, hello there. 
Now we do have one more from the YouTube channel from last week and I completely forgot about this one. And this one is from Mary. Hey Mary. Mary said, I truly hate daylight savings time. Yes. I always have. My whole being wants to be in standard time all the time. I always feel lousy that first day. This it's really week, hard. It hit me hard. I hate daylight savings time. I think it's time to get rid of it. I mean, I think it served a purpose. It was great for farmers, but now <laughs> I'm not a farmer. you don't ha need it anymore. We have all of this technology and you have plenty of lights. There's no reason to have to be messing with it. It messes with people's minds. It gives people depression. It causes people to be late for work. I don't always understand the lateness because like, hey, we all use our phones and they self-correct. So you really don't have to adjust too many clocks anymore. But this week it messed with my mind so bad. Like I generally, Rachel gets up every day at five o'clock. I generally get up right around the same time with her because her futzing around kind of wakes me up. <laughs> and Futzing around. So while she's doing that, so I now get up and I start doing my morning reading and my morning devotions. And then I'll usually go and do some exercises while she's out on her walk. I just couldn't get up this week. Because then we do our, we read our book together when you get back. Yeah. And you came home the other day and it was like, what, 6, 30, 7 o'clock. And you're like, I'm going to go to the church because like you're not up yet. And I'm like, I just, for three days, I just could not focus. It has never hit me so hard into the fact that like daylight savings time and we like lost that hour. Well, it in the something with the sunlight too yeah. messes with me also because it would, it's so weird going like five miles and 22 miles on the bike and not seeing any sunlight yet. Mm -hmm. Like you could go and it's like 7 a.m. and you're not seeing sunrise. Right. Like that's very, I don't know, frustrating. I, I wound up going on a second walk with Caleb most of each day this this week because I needed the sunlight. Right. Like it messes with me to only be in the dark. It's messing with Tabitha too. Yeah, it is. Oh, I shouldn't have said that name. But um, because what happens is if she gets up and she, Tabitha's got a routine and you yes, cannot mess with her routine. And it is get up. I want to eat. Our whole After I eat, life I'm going to the bathroom. Revolves around our Labrador. And so the problem is, is that usually to let her go to the bathroom, we can just put her in the backyard. She, we go around the patio. She's got a doggy door. But the chickens have now figured out how to go through the doggy door. Yes. So if we have to block off the doggy door all day long, because otherwise we have six chickens on the patio. They just want to hug. And it's funny because everybody gets along. They'll come down and they eat the food that Grayson drops. Our parrot. Our, our African gray. So they're picking. So they're underneath him. And then here Grayson comes down and he's sitting over them. And then the cats are there. I mean, Rachel got a picture the other day of Grayson on the floor along with Tabitha and the cat all sitting right next to each other. And it's amazing how everybody gets along. They're a family. So Tabitha's routine is messed up because now what, what I, I have to make her go to the bathroom first because what I have to do is let her go to the bathroom and then come in. Now I've got to block off the doggy door because the chickens aren't up yet. Right. But as soon as they get up, if they see the doggy door is open, they're, they're coming, coming on in. the patio. And it is messing with her because she was like, no, no, no. I eat first, then I go to the bathroom. And I'm like, no, no, no. Now you're going to go to the bathroom first. And she, she's like, she's like, she'll look at me like, I'm not going. She's I'm just got, not going. She's got that Labrador face that has built in eyebrows. And I mean, they have such a strong expression yeah. that it's just like, you know, it's you're talking to a child, basically. <laughs> and it's just looking at like, we're not doing it like this. Like, no. Uh, next one is from Peggy. Hey, Peggy. She says, even if you can't physically see the results in front of you, every single effort is changing your body from the inside. Never get discouraged. I Peggy, thank you. I love that. I love that. We need to That's hear like that. That's like another more. college professor of the week. Yes. Uh, next one is from Francine. Hey, Francine. Francine said, if I were to come to your house and steal what is on top of your refrigerator, what would I be getting? Wow. What would you be getting? What would you be getting? I think that in the past it was dust bunnies, boxes of cereal, and yakisoba noodles. Remember, we, I mean, oh my gosh, we were so bad with that. Now it's bone broth. Yeah. And our knives. Yes. Right. And, but dust bunnies too. And dust bunnies. Definitely dust bunnies. I try to get up there every week, but I feel like with all of the animals that we have, we generate so much like hair and dust that it's just like, 
We have used the top of that refrigerator for so much storage because we don't have enough storage in our kitchen, mostly because I have too many gadgets. But what happened is, is there's a cabinet behind the refrigerator, right, up on the top. That is a useless cabinet. And that is a useless cabinet. Because number one, I can't even open it all the way because of the hinges on the refrigerator. But then I always have something on top of the refrigerator. So in that cabinet is stuff that you're never going to use, which means I should really be selling it or throwing it out. It's like the fine china. What is, if you have that same experience that we do, and you have that very tall, high cabinet that's behind the refrigerator that is totally flipping useless, what do you put in there? Yeah, that's a good one. You may want to go in there because you don't know what's in there and there may be a treasure chest in there. I actually opened ours up the other day. You know what I found? What? A fondue set that we have never, ever used. We so We've need never used to it. do that because fondue is perfect on keto. It is, but we bought it at a thrift store. It's still wrapped in tape. We never used Date it. Date night. <laughs> Let's use it. Speaking of which, I did find you came home with another water pitcher, which probably came from a thrift store. Like, what are we doing with that? Is that a decoration? Because we're certainly never going to use some ceramic water pitcher. It's just pretty. I like the color. <laughs> Uh, next one is from Elliot, or Amy, rather. I'm hey, sorry. Amy. Amy said, started upping my protein last week, and the scale is up five pounds. Sad emoji face. But my jeans are out of the dryer, are not tight like they were last week when they were on the verge of being too big. Stupid scale. Thank you so much for sharing this because yes, that is just an awesome notification because everybody knows that- The when scale you, is the devil. The scale is the devil. But when you get the, the pants out of the dryer, that is like the, the true test of do they fit. Yes. Anthony will tell me like, please wash all my clothes in cold water and go ahead and just hang them up. Like I don't even want my my uniform for um, officiating in the dryer. Well, that's because we have these uniform shirts and you have to have a patch on them when you do a high school yeah. game. And they can charge whatever they want because of that stupid patch, which is now not even a patch. It's like sublimated on. And that shirt is $57. And we had to buy new ones, and it was 100% polyester. And Anthony's like, great. Yeah. <laughs> $57. They're telling you you can't put it in the dryer. It's going to shrink. I mean, it's like really crazy. But yeah, no, but I do put on jeans like out of the dryer. And yeah, sometimes in the past, if they if you're like on the border of them actually fitting, the dryer makes it that you have to jump the bed in order to like. Yeah, but on. you know what the dryer did for me? It was always justification. Like I would just blame the dryer. Like I'm up 10 pounds. No, it's, I'm not really. The pants don't fit because the dryer shrunk my pants. Stinking dryer. Like, but then when it gets to the point that now you can't even button them at all, like, okay, maybe it's not the dryer. It's not the dryer. It was always a good reason to not wash my jeans for a couple of times. Like Rachel would pick up my jeans. I'd wear them for an hour and then go put them in the wash. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, you wore them for an hour. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They finally fit you gotta let him stretch out a few hours first our pastor puts his in the freezer that's a great way to disinfect them so uh, next one is from stephanie hey Steph. she says as we all get the buffer is this what's being said i love this wait do you see this <laughs> she said, Look at my face. Joe, what did you do now? It wasn't me. Boys, are you playing your games again? So that's from our live stream the other day. It's official. We've hit the big time. We are now memes. I love it. This is like the greatest day ever. My my face, I was in such panic mode and Joe just like in his mind just goes into like I infinity felt, I land. I was like so upset. I know. Just fixing it. Thank, thank you for making a joke out of it. I love that. So it was funny because last week's live stream, we didn't have any buffering issues. We added some with that that quick live stream on Sunday, on Saturday. But last week's live stream became this week's thumbnail because Joe from Pembroke Pines sent me a picture. Like, look at the screenshot I got. And it was you with some weird face. And a couple people emailed me like, where did you get that from? I'm like, one of our subscribers. If you ever see a really funny screenshot of us, send it to us. I can use it as a thumbnail. I love it. But, I, and I always, my frozen face is always crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same thing of every family picture. It's like people had a knack for catching me eating. It's like every family reunion picture, I'm like, maybe I was eating a lot, but yeah. Uh, next one is from Ellen. Hey, Ellen. She said, just caught up on the Thursday Night Live and something Joe said really resonated with me. He said, if all you can do is go to the mailbox, then do that three times a day. Aww. You just tripled your activity. I work a very sedentary office job in a large building pretty much alone due to the pandemic. 
I made it my goal to get up and walk the hallways of the office at least once an hour. Thank you, Joe, for this new perspective. Oh my gosh. So Thursday was not a total. It wasn't a total loss. Like loss. I'm so happy. That that makes my heart so happy. Yeah. I I do want to say I can't take the credit for that. That came from a combination of Dr. Barry and Nurse Cindy from the Proper Human Diet Summit. And it just, it hit me when they said that because for so many years I was so inactive. Number one, because of like all of my injuries and things like that, but also laziness. So when you think of, yeah, if you're not doing much, if you were sitting on the couch, like once in a while, I'll watch some of those like 600 pound lives or the thousand pound sisters. And it's like, if all you can do is sit down and just take a box and lift it up and down while you're sitting in your chair, do this like 50 times, right? At least you're working some muscles. You're getting some action, but it really just hit me hard when they said that. So I'm just passing along the information from Dr. Barry and Ask Nurse Cindy. I love that. Uh, Next one is from Diane. Hey, Diane. She says, I have a question. I know I should set my protein goal to my goal weight. I have done that. However, I consistently go over that amount. Does this mean that I will only be able to lose down to match the amount of protein I'm eating? Will I need to be more strict and not go over in order to hit my goal weight? So no. So again, and I know there's a lot of people that have questions about the protein thing, which is one of the reasons we're going to have Bronson on. We're also working on having some other guests on. And he's in the Facebook family group yes. right now. You don't have to wait until April. If you've got a question for him, go ahead and put it in the Facebook and family group. And he will group. answer you. Yeah. And again, everything that Bronson's going to be doing with our group for the next month is completely free. He is a coach and he does charge for his services normally, but he is doing this completely for free. So for the next month, you've got a coach, somebody who's going to walk you through somebody's going to ask you quest answer your questions and challenge you so definitely take advantage of this yeah but no so the whole idea is eat as much protein as you want what you're limiting is your fat because protein calories really don't matter what's going to matter is the fat you also can't not eat any fat and it's funny because we again we were doing that podcast with robert and we started kind of touching on that and if, if you know robert keto savage he is very into a high fat diet and, and not eating a lot of protein but he does believe you should be eating protein and a decent amount but you have a threshold of it but what he doesn't like seeing is people coming in being like you don't eat fat because you have fat and he's like no 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 you need to have some fat in your diet for vitamins and nutrients and and you know for healing properties and things like that you know what's interesting to me when we get messages the majority of messages is do i need to eat all of this protein do i have to eat all of this fat i never get a question of do I have to have all these carbs? No. Never. There's never a person that has emailed us and said like, all of these, these pesky 20 net carbs, these pesky 40 total carbs. I can't get carbs, them in. I can't get those in. Right. It's just very interesting. I never get a question about that. It's always, do I have to have all this protein? Do I have to have all these fat? And I think if, if you're thinking that to yourself, then start lobbing the carbs right that that's the one that you don't need to worry about (laughs) yeah but don't worry about if you're going over your protein you're fine that is not really what's controlling your homeostasis that's going to help your body building muscle and with some with amino acids and things like that but uh what you are watching is your fat and your carbohydrates the energy side that is the side that is going to determine your homeostasis I'm actually eating much higher protein than what my goal weight is. So I'm up at around 220 grams of protein right now, but I'm keeping my fat down at around 150. So I'm actually eating more protein than fat in an effort to kind of jumpstart my system because I just needed more protein. Yeah. Uh, Next one is from Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Sherry said, trying to do the one-to-one ratio, tracking my foods on chronometer, I do okay with keeping my carbs in check. Yes. But by the time I get anywhere near my protein goal, I've blown my fat allotment out of the water. So if you're eating mostly whole foods, you shouldn't have a hard time with a one-to-one ratio because pretty much all of the foods that you're eating are going to be one-to-one. So with the exception of maybe something like a bacon, which is going to have a little bit more fat, but you can offset that when you get into like eating hamburger or things like that. So if you're blowing your fat out of the water, you're probably putting in too much outside fat. Maybe you're cooking yeah. with maybe too much butter or too much lard or too much tallow. So maybe cut out adding in dietary fat and just use the fat that's in the meats itself. Like 
you know, if you're having bacon and eggs, cook your eggs in, in the, the bacon, bacon grease. grease. Also remember that if you are eating bacon, when you're measuring out and you're putting in like, I'm having a, a piece of bacon, unless you're drinking that grease, you're not really getting all of the fat that that slab of bacon actually has when you put it in the chronometer, right. unless you put in pan fried. So like, but if you put in just raw bacon or like what's on a package, that's gonna be how much calories and how many grams of fat is on that piece of bacon before you cook it. Right. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, next one is from Gordon. Hey Gordon, they say a couple questions. I decided to get a handle on my carb food in general addiction. According to Keto Chow Calculator, I should have 1883 calories, 116 fat, 189 protein. I know I shouldn't go over 20 carbs, not the issue. <laughs> <laughs> fat piece of cake, part in the cake reference. If I'm doing three keto chow shakes, how do I get up to 189 protein? My understanding is I can go over on fat and not a big deal. Protein, do I need to hit 189 or is less acceptable? Thanks in advance for any guidance. Okay, so Gordon, I don't know what your ultimate goal is. I mean, 189 protein is actually really good. So if you were eating 189 grams of protein and then say 20 carbs, you could actually bring your fat up to about, what is that gonna be, what, 169 grams of protein. You would be perfectly fine. That would get you down to 189 pounds if that was your goal. Ultimately, that's where you would get to. Um, if you're only doing three kilo child sh shakes a day, there's a couple of ways you can get your protein up. Number one, you definitely gonna eat, wanna eat more protein because three keto chow shakes is only gonna be 75 grams of protein. That is not enough protein for anybody. Okay, you really need to up your protein for like all of the different benefits of it, but um, you could add in some Equip protein powder. So we love Equip, we've got a coupon code down below. They're actually sponsors of our channel and we do ask you guys, if you are gonna get Equip or Perfect Keto or Keto Chows, please support the companies that support our channel. We put all of our content out there for free. We do all of this because we love it. And one of the things that helps us is with the sponsors. And so when you use those sponsors, it kind of encourages them to like, hey, they're trying to put something out and we found right. you. So we that's, that's the only way that we do anything or be able to pay for computers. So we appreciate you guys supporting those sponsors. Uh, but put in a, using a quip, which is gonna be a beef protein, that will add more protein. One one scoop is 25 grams of protein. So if you did one scoop of that along with a scoop of keto chow, you've just doubled your protein. Now you're up to 150 grams of protein. Right. You could also, if you don't want to do something like a scoop of Equip in there, you could uh, eat a can of salmon or a can of chicken, chicken breast. breast. Just get some chicken Shrimps. breast. Um, now again, you still have a bunch of fat that you could play with. What you don't want to exceed is you don't want to exceed your fat goal, okay? That is, fat is a lever, it's not a goal. So you don't want to be eating copious amounts of fat. That will hurt you if you are trying to lose weight. You need to eat fat, but you don't want to eat too much energy. If you're eating too much energy, then you're going to end up you know, stalling yourself out. Protein won't hurt you. So. You could, because you have some room in there, you could have some like ground beef, yeah. you know, just eat some other high protein meals along with it. So you can do three keto chows and maybe have a burger or three keto chows and Rachel a lot of times have like a nice giant chicken breast or yes. something like that. Uh, next one is from my Lisa. My Lisa says, what is your number one most used kitchen gadget since starting keto? Personally for us, it's been our immersion blender, thanks to Keto Chow, bulletproof coffees and egg coffees, and our frying pans. We don't use the dishwasher for them anymore. We use them too often, so we hand wash them now. I have had to fight everybody in my family from putting my pans <laughs> in the dishwasher. First of yeah. all, it ruins them. Right especially like the non-stick kind of ones. But, and then everybody wants to wash my cast iron with soap. And I'm like, you're ruining my cast iron pan. It's hard to wrap your mind around like thinking that it's just not sanitary. That's right. usually what it is. Every time you heat it up, it's desanitized. It I know, but it's itself. a hard thing to, you know, it was like when Al Bundy on Married with Children used to be like, don't clean my grill because, <laughs> you know, it's adding the flavor of all of the past barbecues. Right, right. Okay, so what is my, so let us know down in the comment section, what is your most used kitchen gadget? And I'm trying to think, what is our most used Blackstone? kitchen? Blackstone? 
That's not a kitchen gadget though. Blackstone is definitely the most used Vitamix. cooking thing. And I'm gonna say for us now, Probably it has Benedict. definitely changed over the years and has changed even over the course of keto. But I, I wanna say now it is the Vitamix. Um, mm. It used to be the immersion blender. Coffee maker. The coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee maker. Okay, you, you got me there. Yeah. I would definitely say for us it is the Vitamix now. It used to be the immersion blender, but I, I hate having to take it out and I have to go dig for it and find the parts. And then I'm not good with the immersion blender as I, I put it in and then I turn it on and it spurts everywhere. We use it for mayonnaise. We a do lot. use it for mayonnaise. But the most, the one that usually gets used every single day is a Vitamix. I use it yeah. to make my keto chow. I use it to make ice cream. We use it to blend up coffees. Um, we use it, if you can use it to make mayonnaise, if you don't have an immersion blender, True. you just have to pour the oil in. Um, you've used it to chop up chicken. Because that mean, thing will, immer I mean, that thing like just tears stuff up. We use it to make slushies. Sometimes we just want like a slushy drink. So we take some water, some ice, and a few squirts of like one of the cocktail skinny syrups, like yeah. the cherry or they have a cotton candy one. We put a couple in there. Can you what add you seltzer water to it? You put some, you put just enough, ice, you put ice in there and you put just enough water for the ice to float. Just as soon as it starts floating and then you blend it on low and it gets that slushy snow. consistency. The snow and so, ice. Yeah, we use that every single day. But let us know down in the comment section, what, what is you your use? most used kitchen appliance? Uh, next one is from Ann. Hey, Ann. She said, okay, I'm probably going to get flame, but this is another side of intermittent fasting. I know that I am a compulsive eater and I could easily turn to binge and purge if I wanted to. If intermittent fasting works for you, great. I need something in my stomach on a regular basis, even if it's just a fat bomb or a meat stick. Well, first of all, Anne, you're not going to get flames. <laughs> we love you. And everybody's doing, you know, their keto journey differently. I think it's very important to know what works for you and what is your motivation behind it. Because, mm -hmm. yes, if you are just intermittent fasting or, you know, practicing very long, extensive intermittent fasting, I should say, because we're all really intermittent yeah, fasting. Yeah, everybody's intermittent fasting. That's what breakfast is. Like, it's breaking your fast. Yeah. So, but if you're doing that for really long periods of time to avoid any kind of relationship with food, that's not healthy. Right, right. So, here's the thing about intermittent fasting. You don't have to intermittent fast to do keto. We don't recommend intermittent fasting every single day, especially if you've had a messed up metabolism like yeah. we have. Maybe if you're much younger, it's a little bit easier, but if you're older, there are definitely benefits to intermittent fasting, but our body is really smart. And so if you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, your body learns to adapt to that. So we like to change things up. One day we're gonna break our fast at two. One day we're gonna break our fast at five. Um, honestly, I don't really intermittent fast that much anymore because I'm trying to get more protein in. So I generally am having some kind of a protein drink in the morning. It is usually about 250 calories. It is usually about 50 grams of protein. There's not much fat in there, but it's still breaking your fast. And I enjoy that, but there's other days where I'm gonna go 20, 24 hours without eating anything. I think it's good to mix things up. There is another downside to intermittent fasting that people don't talk about, and that is like we're talking about with like even with your protein or even your overall energy that you're trying to consume. If you're intermittent fasting, especially on an OMAD, sometimes you're not able to get all of that food in right. and that will slow down your metabolism. So if you're on a regular basis, should be bringing in say 150 grams of protein and like maybe 100, 125 grams of energy from fat and carbohydrates and you're consistently doing OMAD and can't get more than 50 grams of protein and 50 grams of fat, your metabolism will slow down. You're right. right. So it's important to make sure you're getting everything in. Once in a blue moon, that's fine. But if you're on a regular basis, consistently under eating, you'll lose some weight at the beginning, but then your body's going to plateau and you're not going to have any place to go from there. If you are intermittent fasting also because of your relationship with food, and maybe you have some very sensitive times of the day, let's mm -hmm. say that like, for me, it would be like four or five o'clock was really a challenging time for me. And that was a time where it wasn't a meal time, it was a snack time. That right. was a very dangerous window for me. Try to replace 
the eating time with doing some other activity, yeah. you know, something fun, like go out, you know, go, go shopping for a new blouse, go for a walk, play a, a game of golf, like do something fun, but replace that time, like make that time a time of doing something productive and not doing something that you don't want to do like snacking. Yeah. So we have one more and that's from Tony. Hey Tony, they say non-scale victory. I was at the thrift store picking up some new shirts. I decided to just look at jeans in case they had anything good. The aisle began with the size 12 marker and my first thought was keep going because 18 is where I have lived most of my life. Then wait, no, right here. Size 12 is my size now. Still hard for me to believe. That is awesome. That is so stinking awesome. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of times we identify with that size. Mm -hmm. Like, I can remember for a long time, you know, I identified with a W. Yeah. I was, a, I was whatever the size is, W. I was right. in that whole entire section. And that was really a part of me. I would describe that I'm a, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and I am a W size. Right. So when you get to change that, that whole area and shop somewhere new, that is such a precious, awesome thing. So I'm really excited for you. And yeah, keep going. Well, that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. We thank everybody for joining us. Now, don't forget, we have two live streams this week and for the next six weeks. Yay. First one is going to be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time with guest Bronson Dance. So bring your questions about eating one-to-one, -one, bring, your, bring your questions about our April uh, No Joke Challenge, any kind of fitness questions. If you have questions about building up protein, he's gonna be there to answer you this Wednesday and every Wednesday for the next six weeks. And then on Thursday, we have our normal live stream, which is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, where we just like to have fun. So you can bring your keto questions or if you just wanna come hang out with us, see what kind of silly things Rachel is wearing, see what kind of silly face we have. When we you, freeze. You could uh, put a $5 super sticker in to have Rachel say balls for an hour, whatever you wanna do. Come join us during our live streams. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, we have 105 other keto on the couches, which I'm gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.